printing fabric again, and I'm doing an exercise that oftentimes generates lots of new enthusiasm for this process, and where I'm actually just using one stencil and pushing the boundaries and seeing what I can get it to do. That's an awesome thing, and you're going to want to do that in your own work. So I'm starting with this bamboo stencil. Some of you have this in your collection, and um, the great thing about it is it's so versatile, and because you have your own printing style, you're going to take it off in your own direction. Um, some of you would be printing a fence and a grid and putting a circle in each one. Some of you may have a more organic approach, as I do. But let me just show you, show you a couple ways I've been playing with this. So in this first image um, of the stencil design, you can see I've used it on uh, some white linen at the edge um, to create a border. So I've got it on a dress form here. So you can kind of see, oh, it could be interesting as a neckline for something. So just that first pass. You can also limit yourself by staying with one color paint when you print. I mean, you can, you can um, kind of organize this as an exercise in a variety of ways. But here's a cool thing here. So if I show you my mask, I'm gonna cr I've created a couple of masks. This particular one, I've cut out a square and a circle out of a piece of cardstock. And by laying that down first and then printing that same bamboo stencil, wow, look at how different this is than that neckline um, edge, which had a much more organic feel. So once I print, printed this, and it, it kind of um, influences the way you think about laying out a design when all of a sudden it's a square. It did make me think about, oh, maybe I want to combine some stitching with that. So I pulled up some um, Sashiko thread and look at how cool this looks. Just the addition of the thread um, indicated by the presentation of where the stencil was placed really suggested and really blended nicely with the th with the thread. So this got me thinking about, you know, using that circle in a similar way. So look what happened with the circle. It could be on the back of a neckline. If you think about the pattern you're using, maybe you want to have one of those um, um, on the front or on a pocket. Um, so sometimes the pattern or what I'm making comes into play as I'm as I'm doing this uh, doing this exercise. Um, the other thing that it inspired was the use of more thread in different ways, and I love how this looks. So I've created this these little grid kind of fence-looking pieces, and I went back with the orange embroidery thread and tied each intersection, which I think is the coolest thing ever. So this is going to show up um, on a shirt or um, some other project really soon. Um, so it, it kind of makes those stenciled images like real objects, and I love that play. If you choose to continue using that same stencil, look at how different it looks um, on the, the painted surface. So I printed this white linen with the green uh, paints, and the green paints were a little thick and heavy in those areas, so I went back with the white paint, and I stenciled over the top with the bamboo stencil couple of the shapes in there. I've also used a couple of other stencil designs, but you can see how that really kind of broke it up. So sometimes this, those shapes in the stencil really lend themselves to an, another layering. Here's a canvas piece, and you can see on this one, the indigo colored bamboo sticks are really just folded in a part of the design, but I like the linear quality of the the bamboo sticks and what direction they would go. Let me just show you one other stencil that you may or may not have. They all work like that. That's what's so cool about using this idea of a mask or a frame and staying with one stencil. So this calla lily stencil has got some beautiful organic shapes, some nice stick curved shapes. In this first project, you can see here's a scarf that I printed um, and you, and how you print, the amount of paint, the variation in the printing, boy, that's a big piece of what makes your um, printing style stand out and makes your work unique. So you can see more of that um, in another one of those, um, you know, video clips or in my streaming video on my website. Um, so here's another version of that 
um, very organic cowl lily stencil with a square. See how I dropped that square on top of the stencil before I printed? The square let me kind of move it around and pick out what I wanted to see in the square shape. And you can see when the square was actually printed, it ended up being just parts of it showing in the square, which create those angles and a really interesting accent for that organic shape. I want to play with that one a lot more. Let me just show you one more here. And this one, you can see I cut a shield shape and put that on top of the, the same calla lily stencil. And boy, those design shapes, those would go far and I could do a lot of interesting things with that. So that's, boy, that's what I'm playing with this afternoon. And I just wanted to share that. Remember to look at your stencil collection, look at the basic shapes that are there and what your um, window shape might be that would kind of open that up and give you more, more options. So have a good time and we'll check in again. Happy printing.